Hello, hello. This is Liz. We are live. Um, I will wait for a few people to hop on so we can get some little um, messages here. Make sure that you leave a comment so we know you're watching. Julie's getting set up. <clears throat> I was changing my scissors. Need sharp scissors for this craft. For sure. That's been a, a conversation we've been having lately at our house is where scissors should be stored for which job they do. Excellent. That is <laughs> no one touches the sewing scissors. So exactly. The um the craft scissors we so we have um some old kitchen scissors, you know, like um the kind that go in your knife block, right? To like yes. food scissors. Um when they when they get too dull or can get replaced, they end up going into like our garden shed and used outside. Perfect. For stuff like that. So we yes. just um we just got, and this is kind of a weird story, but um, I feel like I, I feel like people might appreciate this whole thing. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. We just got this thing called a doggy dually, and it's essentially a dog um, septic system. <laughs> okay. So basically, you dig a really big hole and you put this plastic like container over the hole, and you can put the dog waste in it, and it composts in the hole, and it doesn't smell or anything. It's fantastic. So you're not using plastic bags. Yes. Um, to pick up waste, it's so much easier. Basically, you just use a shovel and you put it in the hole. But in order to dig that in the middle, in like a convenient place in our yard, um, I didn't want the lawnmower to run over it. So I decided to put bricks around it. Okay. So I had to buy, I ordered um, the, I, I'm i blanking on the t term for it now. I'm going to say yard blanket, but that's not the right word. The, bla but, there's the black material. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like the weed blocker stuff. Yes. So I got that. Um, but it's weird. They, they sent it in silver. Like I've never seen it in silver, but I guess this is supposed to be like more industrial. Okay. Um, so I put that down and I'm sorry, my phone's ringing. I'm going to turn that off real quick. <laughs> um, we do have a viewer. I'm sorry. I'm gonna turn that off. Oh, here we go. Try to close that. Okay. So, um, I put that weed blocker down and then I put a bunch of rocks on top of it around that thing. So I needed scissors to cut that weed blocker. And it's like I said, it's the silver kind. So it's a little bit more industrial feeling. So I was really glad to have those scissors on hand. Excellent. Yes. Nothing is, uh, when my kitchen shears go outside that we are done. Special, yeah. That that's frustrating, but we have a, um, this was a gift for my mom. Who's an avid gardener. We have these little clippers that are perfect for cutting flowers. Oh, and the stems, which are are more, uh, they're they're difficult. There, there's thickness, and some flowers have more of a, a woody stem. So we have these perfect little shears for flowers, and that way, when we want to cut any flowers from outside to bring in, we use those. So it's funny you have little scissors for everything. Yes, exactly. They all have their own job. Well, I mean, I guess it's not much different than like knives in the kitchen, either. Okay. So don't cross over. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it won't get the job done right and it might dull the blade. Yes. Exactly. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop us both on since we've got okay. some viewers now. This is our like buffer screen because I feel like it's always a jump when you come on and there's people. So good morning. Hello. 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 Um, I've got the dogs wrestling over here too. So it's gonna be a fun day. <laughs> and Meryl, she's grown so much. I saw a picture of her. It's so funny because I, when we first picked her up, I did not expect her, like she was very, she was much smaller than she looked. I feel like her picture makes her look really big. And um, when I got her, I was like, oh, she's so tiny. I wonder if she's going to grow anymore. And she is four months now. And she's definitely actually caught up to Bitsy. She's like they're almost the same size. So it's very oh, wow. interesting. And then also, did you see, I know you make wonderful earrings, but did you see my earrings? Yes. So I have, I have Bitsy. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry. Marigold on this ear and Bitsy on this and ear. And you can day. mix and match. That's terrific. So I was originally just going to get a mix and match pair for myself, but then I was like, no, my daughter's going to want them too. So I just got full pairs and we're mixing and matching as we want. I and we also it. have the cat. The cat, who, my favorite cat, just has the face. <laughs> That's terrific. I love them. I yeah, love and Bitsy, them. I'm very excited to meet you. To meet. Oh, these are Marigolds. I keep mixing up her ears. Bitsy's is really fun because she normally doesn't smile or anything. And in this one, oh, with the tongue out. <laughs> she totally looks like chill. And I love it. But um, 
Hello, everyone. I see more and more people hopping on now that we've been live for five minutes. And so, we're just uh, chatting about <laughs> we, scissors. We, and We have very silly conversations, Liz. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it, this is one reason. I know we talked about this yesterday, but I just want to say I know right now is a very heavy time for lots of different things. Yeah. Um, and you were like, oh, what should we do? And I'm like, I need I need your brightness, Jolie. Every Wednesday, I look forward to this. A little bit of cheerful, oh. a little bit of crafting, something that I can do. So thank you so much for doing this for us. We really Absolutely. appreciate your time. Absolutely. And hopefully we can continue doing it in uh, many different forms. We might change some things up uh, as the times change, just because, again, the store is going to be reopening-ish. Uh, I'm not okay. technically open on Wednesdays, but I come in just to film this. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, Okay. No, it's easier. I could do it at home, but then the kid's climbing on me. The dog's down here is nothing compared to that. I love her, but um, I like to rewash these with her later uh, so that we can do them. <laughs> and then it's I can nice. Pause I it. realize you can pause it. And yes, um, I feel like this time, this is a different craft today in the sense that we're not going to finish it. Like if you were working along with all the others, you could do it right there, hands on with me. This is a craft that. You're gonna have to watch first and um, prep and do it later. So all come together. So I'll show you all the steps, but as far as pulling it all together, um, it won't be in this this half hour. So yeah, it and I, random, but I just want to say I love that. I feel like we coordinated our shirts today. Oh, nice. Like I like that we're really like matchy matchy and <laughs> we're ready to go. I feel like we almost look like we have our stuff together. <laughs> we do, of course we do. I know, I know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but before um, before I get started, I just want to share. I did get these books in stock, so I'm going to share them. I did get this pom-pom books in stock. I'm going to bring you one later. but Because um, okay. this one is just ridiculously cute. Um, and then also this little food one. So I just ordered my own pom-pom makers and um, some extra yarn because I told you there was some that I wanted to make. Um, yes. So I do have these in stock here at the bookstore. Again, this is Liz from Capricos Books in downtown Bel Air. And today we are making the yarn rainbow with Miss Julie Ellen of and Julie Charlie. Ellen Designs. Yes, and Charlie. And Charlie, let me see if I can do it. Here's, <laughs> here's Charlie. He does not like to be pulled up, but here's Charlie for a second. Dog. Look at that. There we go. Here's Charlie. <laughs> and we also have another friend. We have Wicker. Here it is. Here it is. And we Yay. have this one. Oh so yes, so we're pretty. just we're, we're full of dogs today. This is happiness. This is your happiness. I know, even I just want to snuggle. <laughs> All right, so I will let you get started. I will cover okay. myself here. Okay, there you go. So today, um, we're gonna make a rainbow wall hangings. This is the sample that I made, and Liz and I were talking about the colors. I am just using. Um, the materials that I have in-house here. So at my house, uh, you can do as many uh, rows as you'd like for your for your rainbow. And um, we, were, we were talking about my avocado green choice. It wouldn't be my, my first choice because I have such a bright red, uh, okay yellow, I mean orange and then a brighter yellow. But today I, I, I'm going to, to do this. I have some things prepped prior so I can show you quickly at the end how to put put it together but with this we need yarn we need macrame cord so if you're not familiar with macrame cord I have a big spool right here it comes in different thicknesses and uh, you don't have to use this as your base this just made it a lot easier for me uh, you could use a twine you could use um, I don't know. Let's see what 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 I personally I what I personally to did um, it, to get the fray at the end. If you want the fray at the end, you're going to really need macrame cord. You could use a base. You could have other a thicker yarn or a cording, but you may you won't get the fray. Um, but you could always just cut it off here. So there are lots of even this is this is kind of sweet. So you just have. I could um, see using some like dried grass type. Um, material as well 
Yes, you know that raffia. Like the, the raffia. Yes, yeah, raffia. Thank you. I don't. I can't think of words today. <laughs> okay, I don't have really all the time. Um, or if you have a, a thick wire, but I have. I'll show you how I altered this pattern to work with my my cord that I had. So, um, right here for this for the sample, I doubled up two pieces of my macrame cord before adding my yarn but today because i wanted a little bit uh, larger rainbow and a little bit more bold i am putting three cords so we're just going to make that little change for today's to have a, a different outcome it's going to look similar it's just going to be a little bit larger a little bit thicker so uh, we have our yarn we have our macrame cord you need scissors and um, I do have um, some sewing, a little bit of sewing at the end. You can always just glue it as well. So I always have my, my trusty glue gun. Um, and then, of course, because we were on pom-poms, um, I added pom-pom clouds. I love that so much. I told you I want to make, um, out of the book that you recommended, I'm pretty sure it's in that one, there was a really cute little rainbow cloud. Well, it was just a cloud, but I'd love to add a little rainbow in there somehow, and this is going to be a fun addition well, to and that. and you could just have that rainbows, and then you could have, like, uh, raindrops coming from it or um, so, many, so many options. So I'm just going to show you the general technique, and then you take it from there, however many colors um, and however you like your rainbow shaped. So let's get going. Um, I started off for this, for this size, um, I used 12 inches of cord. So I cut my cord in 12 inches and here's my piece, my pieces. So I'm doubling, I'm tripling, I'm doing three. Now macrame cord is meant to split and unwind and create that tassel. So on each end, you're going to tape. So I just took a little bit of tape, put them all together, and I just wound the tape, and that holds it together nicely so it's not fraying just yet. All right, so my two taped ends, and then the core of my rainbow. Next, you're gonna pick uh, whatever yarn color that you're gonna wrap. So if you're going to uh, have um, you start with your red, green, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm up to blue right now. So here's an interesting way, and I think this is what you um, may want to stop and replay again. Um, to start my cording, I'm going to make a little U with my yarn. Place it against, do it towards you, place it against my cord and this is where I will start start wrapping. It's one doing, of the reasons, reasons okay. that I cover myself is because everybody would see me every time you do like a detailed step I like lean to right towards the computer <laughs> so I can see like I like I'm getting closer to it just so I can follow along and see the steps because I love these visual steps and like you said we do have these on our Facebook and our YouTube so that they can be re-watched later if you're not joining us live. Um, but yes, I, I look, I'm following these steps because that is not what I would have expected you to do. Well, and it gives you, it gives a little bit of uh, security with the thread. So now you can see, here's my, make sure I have it towards you. You're always my check. Um, You're good. I can't really see myself. <laughs> here's my loop. And then here's that end, which we'll get rid of later. All right. So now it's all about twisting uh, on the yarn. So I have learned from making these that course twisting the smaller piece which is my macrame cord um, is the easiest but you want to make sure that it's wrapped neatly and consistently okay so keep your tension consistent as you are doing this so excuse me I ran you know out what I just there. thought of what's up and I don't know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sorry if I'm screwing up instructions and throwing people off. But another way to wrap this could be similar to the way that you were doing your friendship bracelets where you make the four and spread oh, it Oh, you can map me on here, me. absolutely. You can so map. like making that, I say four because you know what I mean. Like the P, the <laughs> moving P it around. The P's and Q's that we did. 
Is that what? <laughs> yes. So then that means you pull it up and it'll give that ridge. It'll give a little ridge mm -hmm. of color. Maybe you could put that in there, but that, that would just be um, another way to wrap it tightly. I mean, it's a little more complicated, obviously, than just it spinning it around. Lot, but, it would a lot more work. Um, so if you just want to, it's, it'll, it'll look, have a beautiful braided or ma a macrame look. But if you just want a, a quick swirl, I would, this is, this is faster. So um, let me measure where I am on there so I don't overshoot. So this is the technique so that you're spiraling on the color. So you're covering up your macrame cord with your colorful yarn. Simple. Now, I have some pieces ready to go. So I've already done my red, done my orange, my yellow, my, my avocado. Okay. And if you notice, they're all different lengths. Okay. As far as where I've covered with the cording. I had a little blemish of my yarn. Isn't that interesting how it um, makes a little lump? But that's okay. We can hide that. It's not a big deal. And now I'm adding my blue. So pretty. Now, this is where you have to get some consistency with the shape. And Liz and I had spoken yesterday when I was going to make this. We're like, oh, how are we going to keep the form? Well, with this thickness, it stays in shape. But if you wanted um, a little more um, for it to be a little more firm, you could put wire in it. You could just glue it uh, to a backing, whether it's plastic or card. Use upcycle. So we love using the back of cereal boxes. Liz, you had that wonderful idea of the plastic that everyone's using yeah. with the cleaners. So there are lots yeah. of ways to, um, yes. I said, I said, cut this and then make the, this is a perfect, the only thing is, is that uh, I realized it wouldn't necessarily work because it's all only one circle size and you need True, concentric but, circles. So I, I didn't think about that. <laughs> that's okay. So um, I'm gonna have trouble here because I'm not um, shooting down on this, but when you're putting this together, each length is different because you're getting smaller, but you're going to create these loops. Okay. Now, in this stage, I'm going to make sure they're starting at the same location and ending at the same location. Okay. So I Instead of gluing, I did sew mine together. So um, just some regular needle and thread. You will need a little bit of thicker needle and I just, oh, um, to get it through, but it doesn't take a lot of um, reinforcement because nobody's going to be swinging from this, from this <laughs> rainbow. I, um, I don't know, is any are anyone watching working along at all or are there any questions, Liz? Well, that's a good point. Um, nobody had asked any questions yet, and I okay. feel like we have people we have people coming and going. So I think they're checking in okay. for today. Um, I think I know Liz is here. Liz, um, obviously I'm Liz, but the other Liz. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Liz uh Schlegel Bagel, our friend at Schlegel Bagel Designs, is watching and she said, first of all, she said, Charlie, back when we were talking about Charlie. <laughs> But then also, um, she said multiple strands of yarn twisted together for your macrame base. Instead of using the um, the cord, it's the cord. She just said using yarn kind of twisted together to make it thick too. And I could see how that would work. Perfect. You won't have it. It, it definitely work. It may not be as sturdy as yeah. the macrame cord because there is that really thick consistency. But that's an awesome suggestion. Suggestion. Thank you, Liz. Um, well, I wanted to show you, I needed to measure out where I wanted my blue to end. So I'm going to arch my green. I was going to ask if you had a formula for this. Well, it's easier if I show you on the on the ground, but I or like on a flat surface, but Sorry. I don't really have, I'm not set up for that. So, well, as you can see from here, I need just a, a couple more loops and I'll reach the end. So I have my front end lined up. And you can mark your cord. I did that yesterday, but I feel like 
I like winging it because it adjusts and it moves as you go. So there's no perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm going to snip. I like having extra. But to end my coil, I like doing just a quick slip knot. So I'm going to take a loop here, come around the back end, and put it through. Hold it down. And pull it tight. Again, we're not looking for super security here, but I will add a little dab of glue. <laughs> you love your glue gun, and I love it. I you love it. my glue gun. <laughs> and when it burns me, it's always my fault. So <laughs> you can't get you can't get mad at the glue gun. So I have secured that end. Now I'm going to go back and secure this end. So see how we have it neatly tucked in there. So I'm going to pull this back and put a little dab of glue right in that section. We'll hold that secure. So now we have all of these colors. I really want to add purple. <laughs> Um, so we would cut, the steps are cut your, your core, your center, wrap it, and then you're going to then affix it together. What I like to do is start with the end, cut off my green here. I'm just going to do all these little steps later, but um, just so I don't have any hanging threads to, to get in your view. Take your needle and thread and start from the outside. You're just going to go right through the middle. And I'm going to add all of my cords. This is really hard to show. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, you got to show us. And then <laughs> so I'm just going to talk through it. So you're going to you sew go. through with the first line set up evenly. Okay. Sew through and weave. And then you're going to flatten them out and coil them. And you can sew all the way through. So I sewed my base. Then you want to oh. make sure that all of the yarn is pushed up to where you want it. And from here, you can sew back and forth if you want it together. If you want a little bit of a looser look, um, you can keep it apart. And then at the very end, so you have your, your arch. Let's see if I can do it. I don't know, Lids, if you want to talk or do you have any announcements, I'll sew it so we can have a little bit of oh, a view. Sure since we don't have the time, the, the pause, like we YouTube. <laughs> oh, okay. You're doing well on time. Um, <laughs> it's only been 23 minutes, so you're good. Okay. Um, no, but that's that I can see now. It's so funny because there's so often you share these crafts with me and I think I expect them to be done one way, but they're definitely done a different way. Um, so I really appreciate, again, appreciate you walking through them and showing me techniques that I wouldn't have thought of. Um, it's all very, very simple. Anyone can do this. It's fun. It really is. I definitely would have made it more complicated, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because no. that's how I am. Well, and just know that there's no one right way. Yes. I mean, that's that's the great thing. You're crafting. Be creative. Um, it, there, it doesn't have to be perfect. So, um, and you can do this. Think of it. You could do this in monochromatic. It would be really pretty. Absolutely. And and like we were talking about this, this being this avocado, we were talking about the avocado color being a 70s inspired thing. And that might be part of the decor. So just like you said, I, I think it would be fun to see a monochromatic um, loop there. Yes. And then also all the add, the added touches. So I'm going to do purple here before I start sewing because I just, I, I think it needs that happiness. Um, 
and then all of the accoutrements that you add at the end, the, the pom-poms, you can do pom-poms around it, you could do um, all different things. So remember our, from our pom-pom making, um, those are handmade pom-poms that I use this teeny tiny little pom-pom maker. Yes, I saw that in a kit. I saw there was a, a few kits that I found that I ordered. I'm going to show everybody. This is the um, here is the this is the the rain cloud that I was talking about that I want to make. That's beautiful. I love the teardrop. Um, yes. And so, but I could see it like a cute little like rainbow somehow incorporated into this, and I think this is actually smaller than it looks. But um. I could definitely see like a little rainbow peeking out over here or something like that and how that Absolutely. Um, I think that'd be really fun. And I just love that that particular one uses a bunch of different um, shades of gray. Like, I mean, it's got like a gray lavender, you know, so it's all different colors of yarn that I never would have thought to necessarily look sun, for. Is the sun a pom pom too? Or was there yes. a sun? Yes. Oh, yeah. Let me open it back up. The, so you could um, do multiple colors for the sun? Oh yes, that's that's exactly what I was thinking. I didn't like in this particular one. I think we only used like an orange, but I definitely wanted to use a a little bit of a yellow and an orange together to make and it a little bit more. Even create rays. Oh yes. So you just leave. Um, you just there. There's the techniques in the book. So, <laughs> and you can have like sprouts. Actually, it may not be in that book. It may have looked to somewhere else. But you could do. Um, Almost like a like a tiger's mane is the technique you would use. Oh so, yes. And well, I was also thinking just a little bit of Mod Podge to stiffen up some of the yarn too. Something clear or or even just a regular glue would work. Mm hmm Sure. See, it's all those different things you could do. It's wonderful. Yes. Um, now I'm going to sew this together and show you because I I needed the purple. Um I know. I'm so I am, it's funny, I'm very particular. And that's why when you asked me about adding the blue, obviously I will always say you have to add blue because blue is absolutely my favorite color. Um, but with my rainbows, the Roy G. Biv, I'm, because I'm an art yes. history student and just art in general. And actually, um, it's funny because I don't remember learning that acronym in school, but there's a book. So... The, the word, the name Capricos Books comes from a um, Ellen Raskin book about okay. an island. But Ellen Raskin wrote another book um, where one of the characters that, it, there's a mystery to be solved. And the the mystery is the mystery of this person called Roy G. Bibb and they can't figure it out. And then they realize what it is. And that's why it's always stuck with me so much as like this mystery guy. <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> so I always try to teach everybody. I'm like, you have to know the rainbow and it's so easy to know. <laughs> well, it's very important. So here's the easiest way to do this. Now that I have my purple. Yes. <laughs> you wanna sew the purple first. So I have my needle and thread and I've just done a quick stitch through and then I'm going to add my blue. And this way you get the correct arch. So I'm lining up my blue. Right? And you can take that stitch all the way back if you'd like. Again, there's no exact, there's no rule here. So I'm going to thread all the way back and catch my blue arch. And then you can just build from there. That's I like that you left a little loop. Like personally, I would leave that space as well. You like versus that? making it just tight. And you can, I mean, if you want to, you can then diagonally stitch. But again, whatever makes you happy, that works. And you can do all these different variations. Um, Caught on my tails. So now adding my green, getting that in place. And creating that arch. One thing I, that I like is having them lined up and touching don't want any space in between there, these top arches. 
And that's what I was saying. If you're doing the loop that I was saying earlier, that is more complicated, but I could see having a little ridge in between both of those. And that wouldn't mm -hmm. make it necessarily as even. You just have to make sure. And it would be a more difficult thing to line up. <laughs> so your way well, is easier. <laughs> oh, well, you know, whatever works for you. Um, so I'm going to continue on and then I'll, I'll show you. I'm going to skip ahead. Now I know on, on baking shows, while well, they have one completed in the oven. <laughs> right. Oh, so sneaky. <laughs> but I tried. I had these ready. So yes, I knew yes. it wasn't no, going to no, you're, you're this, is, this will take, this is not a half hour craft, um, but it's worth it. All right. So now I have these three colors prepared. I'm going to mute and step away for just a second, EPS. Okay, sure. So I have these three prepared. And from there, you would continue to add your yellow, your orange, and your red. Okay. So now I'm going to show you quickly, just with this, for my... my fun tail, all I did was take off the tape from my cord, my macrame cord. And I realize not everyone's going to be using macrame cord, but if you did, see how it is made of different layers of string. So to create that fray, I just unravel. So here I have two minus four ply. I'm going to unravel again. I'm back. <laughs> we're, we're up to the, the fraying part. Yes. Of the macrame cord. So all you need to do is unravel it and you're going to get this tassel end. So, and you can brush it out if you have a comb. There are special combs for this, but you can just use a regular barber's type comb, which I would use uh, on this, but um, yesterday my daughters used that on both dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I was just thinking of like a little, um, my husband thought he was being sweet and bought a little flea comb. We, I mean, we don't have fleas, but he just thought yes. that was going to be a good tool for the animal, like for our pets. He's like, oh, it'll feel good on their skin. And I'm like, I don't know. It seems a little harsh. But I was just thinking how fine tooth that would be. <laughs> that would work. Right. I mean, that would be perfect for your crafting. So it's going to be my new crafting comb. <laughs> perfect. Okay. So once you have this fray opened, you're going to see I have all different levels here. You then are going to snip and create a consistent level for your rainbow wall hanger. And okay. um, I, I was just going to say, you have the, the tassels, they're all one color, but I could also see you using um, different shades of blue in the center and making it look like rain. You could. I haven't found, I mean, I'm sure there are tons of different macaroon. This is just the base. Or you can dye it. I'm, I'm yes. like making, I'm making this really complicated. <laughs> no, Liz, Liz, with yours, you know what? what's great about this macrame cord? It's perfect for coloring. So you could do a dip dye. Oh, yes. And so like a variegation. So you'd have the darker color. You could dip and just go that ombre look. Yes. And uh, to make it a wall hanging, I just added a loop and glued it to the back. Um. You can do whatever you want. Like I said, for the the pom poms here, you can add them or not. Um, pom pom makers, as you can watch from our other our other craft uh, shows, and um, that's that's all the techniques that you need to do this. I will finish working on this and post a picture of the completed um, under this video, and I would love to see what what other people made. So please, please share with us what you are making from this craft. And I, it's going to be exciting to see all the variations. So I'm going to go back to um, adding each one. And um, I'll be posting later for you guys. Yay! I can't wait to see it completed. And I can't wait to make my own. And I can't wait to see everybody. So make sure you share your photos with us. And we will see you next week. Yes. Um, 
on our way out, I just want to show what happened. Uh, what I, like there was a few times where I looked down and I just had to show you. They're they're sleeping next to me. The dogs. I don't know if you can see. I'll share those oh, pictures. Yes. But they're cuddled up in a bed next to me, which is so funny because they've been bickering lately. They <laughs> so, have been. Uh oh. It's just some, a little bit of sibling rivalry. Exactly. Very much so. So I need more bones and toys for them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much again for joining us, and we will see you next week. All right. Take care, everyone. <laughs>